and welcome to Stampscaping 101. This is a set 21 video here, Swamp. And I thought I'd do something that I almost never do, and it's not for any particular reason. I just, I don't know, I just don't really uh, work in this medium, but just doing some matte cardstock, stamping out a scene, and coloring it with uh, alcohol pens. All right, let's get to it. Um, yeah, I don't know, I just don't really work in this medium too often, but why not? I'm going to stamp everything out using dye-based inks, and then we'll color with alcohol pens, okay? So, in theory, you know, um, alcohol and water don't mix, so I should be able to color these images just fine working that way. Wouldn't work um, the other way around, I don't think, as good. Of course, I don't know, is there alcohol pads out there? I don't think so. But uh, let's give this a shot here, okay? All right, this is going to be a, just a simple um, layout here. Stamping out my cypresses. I've been doing this scene using my um, um, bayou cabin here, the bayou house. Um, let's not do that one. I just want to kind of mix things up a little bit and have it kind of just more of a, you know, kind of swampy terrain. I don't know, maybe I'll put uh, like a focal point in here with the... Uh, Boating fishermen or something like that, I'm not sure. Let's just see where this goes. I'll flank my composition with two of these cypresses. I might use, you know, I might use another one in here too. Maybe I'll put it out here to the side, something like that. Usually when you stamp it up higher than your previous one, it represents uh, an, an image that's farther off in the distance. In this case, not too far distant, you know, maybe just a few feet or something like that. Nature has a way of kind of, you know, creating space uh, between objects, right? Let me wipe this one off right down here, okay, and I'll show you why. I'm going to stamp this down here so the bottom portion of this will go down in here, and I don't want this part to be too dark because it'll stamp right into my uh, other impression, okay? So, that being said, I'm just going to wipe this off. Let me get that like so. Where I think it's going to overlap. You can also mask that off, you know, if you want to. I don't know, masking takes a little bit more time than just wiping off some ink, though, doesn't it? And I'm all into ease. So, I use easy techniques. I don't use difficult techniques that I make look easy. I just remove the ink, right? Like that. See that right there? How it just kind of fades off like that. Look how this nice, um, you know, silhouette is right there. And plus that looks like light that's hitting that cypress, right? So that's what you do. Um, you use, if you want something to be easy, use easy techniques, okay? It's not me making some kind of, you know, hard technique look easy. My technique for that was that. You know, <laughs> it takes like a couple seconds, so I don't know. People aren't into easy techniques, I'm finding. Uh, uh, I don't know. Or some people these days, okay, they say, oh my god, it looks so easy. It's because you're used to doing kind of more, oh, uh, tedium um, in many cases. And in some cases that it's because that you know, the, the imagery that's being used um, requires that, so um, that would be outline designs, but I don't do outline designs, I do uh, tonal designs, which are a lot easier to uh, to do. I love outline designs, so don't get me wrong, um, but it's just, it's just a, you know, quite a bit more tedious in terms of placement of it, not necessarily usage once you get everything kind of stamped out with outline designs, it's just a matter of kind of coloring it in, uh, which is a great look. Nothing against it, but uh, yeah, it's just, I don't know, it requires a little bit more kind of um, effort in terms of the placement of objects, okay? All right, now this one right here, um, there's some trees in here. I'm going to use some color on it. So what I did was I used black in there like that. I'm just going into the foliage of the um, 
imagery here. This is a, what is this? Olive brown, I love that color from Marvy. These, these are the 1500 series of markers, and um, they were pretty much the pens that everyone used to use um, in just stamping in general. These and the Tombows, so people would color things um, often with these ones. And if they stamped something out and colored it in, it would be like the Tombows or La Plumes, the, you know, the double-sided dye-based um, watercolor pens. Okay, so we have some of the green up top, then we're bringing some of this green down here into the uh, reflection, okay? Now this isn't a, 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 you know, this pen is dry too, but um, uh, you can reinvigorate. You can take this back off and put some water down. That I have a video uh, where I do that if, you, if you're interested in that. But, okay, now this entire portion is going to be in here, right? So let's do that same type of um, activity or process and just wipe that off a good amount, okay? I'm wiping it off a pretty good amount so it should transition to, you know, pretty light when I stamp it out, okay? So it's going from dry, getting a little bit wetter, and then right up here it's fairly, you know, wet, okay? All right, let me stamp that out like so. I, I am going over my cypresses, and some color might get into them, okay? You know, if I look carefully, that might be stamped in here, but you know what I mean? It pretty much goes right in there. Look at this. See where it transitions? That would have been very dark, and it would have transitioned into there. But, you know, I just do it like that, and that's fine. Let me try doing something I haven't done for a long time. They call it huffing. You breathe on this and go for that other impression. So I want to go for a very light impression of that over here. I don't know how much moisture I got from my breath on that, but maybe a little bit. Okay, so this should be a very, very light impression. Yeah, it was darker than I thought. Okay. See that right there? It's not like, it doesn't look like as if it's in front of this tree. So... Here, let me get a little bit of this over here. I doubt if anything will print out, but let's let's give it a shot. Yeah, it's like a little ghost image back in here. Oh, that looks pretty good. <laughs> I need to do more imagery where I just kind of color on the image and stamp it out. I mean, this thing looks, you know, I don't know. When you have all those colors inherent in the objects, it just... Uh, I don't know, it just kind of establishes um, kind of a given um, situation inherently in the designs, making kind of the finishing of these uh, pieces of the scenes just uh, I don't know, so much faster, I guess. Okay, here's some cypress knees to add in my foreground right here. I'm usually doing this with like reeds or something like this, but we're talking about a water environment. Yeah, not that you can't have a kind of a branch or something like that or bushes coming into it. There is, you know, shoreline or, you know, um, waterside types of um, objects in here. Um, but let's see how this goes here. Okay. This is my brand new set. I haven't used some of these object um, images out of this set yet. Okay, so there's some little knees that way. Oh, crooked. Okay, that looks better. And let's go right here. Something like that. Hmm. That is fun stuff. Okay. can already see kind of the light coming through just from, you know, wiping off some of that. Maybe this is one where we should have some light rays you know, streaming through here. All right. Um, huh. We have some of these branches. I'm thinking about bringing it in here, but that looks pretty good as is. I really wanted to use some Spanish moss. You know, these uh, overhanging trees like that. I can come like that if I want to. Maybe let's hold. Okay, I forgot to use those yesterday. I was going to do them in the scene that I was doing, but I totally forgot. You know, I get into all the little details of a scene, and 
sometimes I just kind of forget about certain things, which is fine, you know, you kind of, you, uh, adjust and, you know, you, um, alter maybe kind of your initial concept of the final result when stamping. And, which is a good thing. Okay, this is some, uh, little, um, lily grass. Okay. This is kind of a smaller version of the one that comes a la carte because the bigger version wouldn't fit onto the set. I have this set crammed with uh, imagery, as you can see. All right, this is some little lily grass that just, um, I don't know, it, it brings a little bit of color in here. Let me just color this one just straight with green. I've been doing black, then green, but let's just do just some straight green for some variation. Okay. This makes me almost feel like just doing some compositions like this, and that's, you know, leave it at that. It's kind of fun just to do it like that. But that's not what we're here, what we're here for. We're here <laughs> to do some additional um, coloring here, as I first stated. I'm not going to change this to a no coloring video at all. Okay, so... Uh, my pad is fairly juicy, and there are some areas on my um, trees that are potentially a little bit damp and could drag smear if I color it. So why not just take a few seconds, you know, if you have one of these, if you have a hair dryer, whatever, just to heat set this a little bit. about dye based things like this is what you see is what you get kind of when you color it in like so um you know i'm so used to working with foils and pigment inks lately it those can really change um the appearance of when you dry them out they might look flatter or um you know um, not as deep in value or intensity at times or you can you know you can change the very um, look of uh, the surface itself if you're working with foils because it can kind of rainbow um, when you're drying them out like that. Okay, so I'm just going for some kind of natural colors right here. These are all alcohol pens. You can use whatever brand you, you have. Um, going for some greens. Um, shall we use a little bit of blue, something like that? Oh, I don't know. Something of that sort. There's a really light blue. Okay, so. All right, now here's what I do. Um, when I'm doing things, I tend to layer it. So if you see, like, a light uh, or a darker green somewhere, or brown or something like that, chances are there's a lighter one underneath it, okay? And that's how I bring, uh, I believe, continuity and not uniformity, that's the wrong word, but um, just kind of a cohesiveness to the overall piece, okay? Meaning, um, I'll show you how it looks in application. Okay, so certain things are going to be more green than others in here, and uh, I tell you what, you know, now I say that, let me add a little bit more green in the background here. Let's bring in some additional, kind of, and now I see, I, I brought in these greens right here, um, tones in my color scheme, and I recommend doing this, you know, grabbing out the pens that uh, you might be using and putting them in your hand and taking a look at it visually, all right? That one's not so green, but something like that. Okay, now, see, that gave me the idea of getting some additional um, color in the background there. Uh, let me see what greens I have. I don't have too many of these pens at this point in time. Well, this one's like an olive right here, 
And here's the smaller cypress cluster. Oh boy, this pen is super dry. Let's see if I have a newer one. I should store these um, tip down like that, especially these ones like this. This is like 20 year old uh, pens right here. Okay. Uh, this is so dry, but that might work to my benefit. Okay, so let me see right here. Do a little test print like that. Yeah, I can get a little bit darker. Boy, these pens are dry. Like I said, you know, I, did, I don't do this uh, type of coloring too, uh, too often. I should, I don't know. Just don't... Uh, yeah, there's only so many uh, so many hours in a day, I guess. And I do other things than just stamp, so. Okay, so let's get this tree back in. I don't know, you can kind of layer it here and there. Let's go back right back in here. Okay. See that right there? And then let's get another impression. Let's go for a couple other really light impressions if we can. All right, so that kind of, you know, gave me a little bit of row of that hue in the background, okay? All right, now it's pretty full, uh, visually. And that just, it gives me a little bit of a head start in the coloring as well, because we already have some established color back there. Okay, so let's start adding in some tones. Okay, so going back to these colors right here, we have all these different colors. We have blue. As far as a hue, we have some browns that I'll use, okay? And green, blue, brown, green. All right, they kind of harmonize in terms of um, compatibility too, don't you think? You know, when you look at them, they, you know, I don't have something like this in here. You know what I mean? That really kind of stands out. They're all kind of earthy and, you know, kind of muted. They're not super intense. Not that you can't do that, but I would build up to that, okay? So, like I said, I am... I'm really not practiced at this, and for me, the things that I'm going to be doing on here, I'm going to be doing some other things that'll bring all this together, and it kind of, you know, it it saves me from uh, kind of, uh, I don't know, what would we call it, the burden of technique, <laughs> or certainly experience, okay? I don't need to be good at, um, you know, certain techniques when, when uh, doing uh, certain techniques because there's other things that I do that, for me, you know, make up for it. In, in my opinion, one of the things is just adding some pigment ink in here, like a little fog or like rays of light or something like that. Um, when my coloring isn't great, and it never is. Um, it doesn't matter, you know. This is one of the things I, you know, I'd like to get across to people. But a lot of times people get kind of get into the process, and if they kind of haven't gone through the process from start to finish and see, seen how it comes together, it, sometimes they get frustrated like early on because it doesn't look, you know, they're kind of thinking in their mind maybe something that they've seen before. Um, you know, in terms of the end result. So they get into something like this, and they're adding one color, and they're thinking, wait a minute, it doesn't look like that. And they get a little frustrated. But, you know, but um, kind of seeing th something to the end is really important um, in, ter in terms of bringing something together, in terms of uh, the look of completion. Okay, so here's what I'm talking about here in terms of the colors. Okay, going back to that. I've just added a really light, I don't know, it's of a peachish tone in here and I'm adding it around in these trunks here but I'm also adding it in the water okay and in the shadow areas okay I'm dragging around some of the ink it's it's it is kind of um, smearing to a degree <laughs> But that's okay, because it kind of grays out and kind of mixes with the impressions a little bit. Okay, so see how I'm kind of doing that in the water. But, okay, so that's a light color of 
apricot. Very, very pale, right? Okay. But see, that, I'll go into that, but then I'll bring in kind of a darker tone now. So the lighter tones aren't just where you can see that it's light, okay? The lighter tones are also under the darker tones. So again, continuity there, all right? Let me see, before I move to this kind of darker tone, let's let's kind of just keep building through those lighter ones. Here's a here's a green. Okay, I plan on making some of my greens here in the water. Okay. Now here's the thing. Okay. Uh, kind of an advanced, I don't know. I hesitate to call things advanced, but in a more advanced look is not seeing this whole body of water something to color in like this, okay? You do that when you're working with outline designs and you're just filling in a, you know, whatever, geometric space, okay? But you have to see this kind of this plane here. Th see it as like a platform that there's these different trees on in depth. So this tree right here is closer than this tree right here, and that's in the background. So lighting is going to hit it differently. Now you don't have to know um, exactly where light is going to go. Like um, when you look at this, the only thing you, that you have to do is just vary it. Leave certain areas light, certain areas dark, and it'll all look good. Okay, that way, it's better than just coloring in the whole thing or seeing it as just one uniform value piece. Okay, so see this right here. I mean, I've barely done anything. And it's looking pretty good, you know, just going, leaving a little bit of tone there, or light there, and adding some tone here. But let's just see this build up like this. But see this how light my green is? It's, it's a very little commitment. I mean, that is really pale. So what does that do? It makes our process so easy to do because it's not precarious, okay? It's not like going on with a green like this. Okay, I, I see a swampy green, so I'm going to do this, you know? That really stands out. That's not really dark, but, you know, here's like a Christmas green. That would really stand out in there. And that makes it harder to kind of do. It doesn't mean you can't use those colors, but build up to it. Okay. So, oops, here's a bright one. All right. Okay, so see this right here is coming in. Kind of adding these little streaks like this right in there. I tend to add darker tones in my shadows, okay? The brighter colors are often in the shadows because they're not being washed out by a lot of light hitting them, okay? Like, colors are brighter. They're not lighter, but they're brighter on an overcast day than on a, you know, super light, like high noon, clear day, right? Brighter means uh, more intense, not lighter, okay? Lighter is relatively is the relative light and darkness of something. Brighter is the relative bright and dull. Okay, so see that right there? I've just kind of left um, some areas a little bit light, okay? So I'll show you how it goes. Here's my lighting scheme, okay? It's just There's a little bit of light up here. And there's a little bit of light left in here, here, and here. What you're doing is you're oscillating things. It gets a little bit darker down here. Okay, so it goes light, or dark, light, dark, light, dark, light, dark. There's even a little bit of light right there, but then there's dark uh, light in the background. So you just oscillate things, okay? But try to transition it. Try to go from darker, and then kind of move into the light nice and gracefully. It's easy to do, again, when you're using really light tones like this, all right? But as you start moving up into your darker tones, you know, just kind of use them a little bit more sparingly. Here's a light blue right here, okay? I don't think that's going to change much because it's so light, but we can just kind of add it in there and blend it in. It's kind of creating a little bit of transition between that green and the white right there because it's kind of like in between those colors. Look at this. It's, this could almost be a blender pen. It's so light. So why not just do the lighter tinges first? And then you can build things up, and that makes things really easy and less precarious. I'm not, I don't do this very often. 
I, in fact, I can't even remember the last time I colored just with alcohol pens. I think I did a, a video just showing um, some potential ways to do that. Maybe it was in the uh, Mood and Media series. Okay, so here's a little bit of a brighter tone. Let's move into some brighter tone tinges, okay? I'm going, I'm going to scumble it like this around, okay? I'm not going to put too much of it down. I'll put some of it back here in the trees just to bring kind of a, a slightly more, um, I don't know, vivid um, example of that tone, but see how, I mean, it doesn't really stand out because I've just kind of done it like this. So, you know, you don't have to go like that everywhere. Here's another touch right here, just kind of doing little points of, you know, um, color. Like that. All right. But now, now this doesn't really blend that out. Again, I'm just working on matte paper, so that's soaking in a little bit. So I'm going back to my lighter green, and while it's still a touch moist, I'll blend it out a little bit. Okay. It might not be physically blending, but, you know, we might just be adding a little bit more green into that area. So kind of visually it looks a little bit more blended in, but like I said, it's not putting the, um, the previous ink that I've laid down back into solution and physically blending it out. Okay, so that is that. Let's start kind of developing these tree trunks a little bit more, or these cypress trees. All right, let's see. Uh, let's see if I have anything lighter than that. I think this one right here, right here. So, see this right here? Why not go on one side of the tree, too? Or on certain sides of these kind of knees down here. See this right here? And you can kind of have the lighting coming from one side of it. Let's go like this. And see how this looks. You can come down into your shadows, too, as this is kind of a reflection, right? But kind of taper it so it it blends in, so I'm doing this type of thing right here. See this kind of tail where it's like thicker, and then it kind of tapers off? Well, this is kind of darker up here, and then it tapers in here in the light, so you do the same type of touch like that. And like, like I said, again, you can take your blender and just kind of go in there. Your blender can just be a lighter tone of that, um, your hue. Okay, so see this right here? I'm following suit. I've kind of established that light is kind of coming from this side and coming in like that, just from, you know, kind of blotting that off the first time. So on these knees, I'll kind of favor the lighting coming from the left side of the paper by putting the shadow on the right side. See, these little knees can use a little bit of sh shadows down here too. It's kind of looking a little bit more um, varied and it has visual weight to them. Now, let's try this one. Keep grabbing that. Let's go for the thin side right here. Okay, coming up like that. And this one's pretty dark and bright too, so it really stands out. So I might kind of do this type of thing here and there, just a little scumbling like that. You don't have to go for a real solid application of it. Okay, you can just kind of get some of that color in there, like about like so, okay. And then, while it's kind of waiting there, let's go to a, another tone and just kind of blend that in while it's still a little bit moist. I see it physically blending, so I'm hitting it early enough. It doesn't completely go back into solution. I'm not able to move it around, but... I can kind of blend it a little bit, and I'm kind of bleaching it too. I'm getting some of that color off. I can see some of it kind of removing too, but you know, it's 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 pretty well established on there, uh, being a, a matte paper here. 
Okay, and that blending that shadow down here into the water. Um, there's a couple things that I can do too. Um, there's this little, this little um, plants here in the in the uh, uh, trunks here. I'm gonna, going to color those a little bit green. There's some more moss that I kind of missed. All right. Yeah, let's see this right here. This is a pretty bright green color. It's almost too bright. I think for right now, I might you know, come into it. But you just kind of take that so you get the brightness of it. But then kind of mute it out, mute it a little bit. See, when I kind of drag across that wet ink, it gets on my tip there, and I'm able to spread it around this. Let's see what other colors I have. These days, you know, there's certain types of pens that are really inexpensive, like this pen right here. It's a shuttle art one, 50 cents each. I haven't even used some of it. It's getting some of that little crusty uh, tip thing going here, but you just kind of wipe it right off. But if you want kind of a big selection of pens, you know, you can get for your kind of your name brand ones too, certainly. And, uh, but if there's certain types of pens, that, you know, before you get like a gigantic collection of one brand, you can kind of pick up, you know, just a full set of these. And then, you know, if there's a color that you really like out of these ones, you know, you can, if you want to, you can kind of get the, um, you know, more name brand one if you want to of that color. But then you've used this one to kind of as a testing one to see if you like it. I don't feel the need, you know, for certain brands or whatever. I think these ones work pretty good. And at 50 cents, I'm able to get, you know, an 88 pen color set for $40. Okay, so ending this down like so. I like this color right here. See, this is one of those colors. Maybe I wouldn't use it too often, but, you know, when it's so cheap, you know, who cares? You know, you just, you know, uh, test it out. It could be used for, you know, I don't know, one or two uh, things. Or one or two types of usages you know, that are fairly infrequent. But it's just kind of good to have the, uh, you know, the option of, you know, utilizing that um, color. Some of these pens I, I don't think I've used at all. Like that, like this tip right here, because I'm storing it up. That tip's kind of, you know, dry, so I should store that one down probably. But the chisel tip right here is, you know, working just fine. It's super juicy. Okay, so I'm adding this down in the water, but I'm also coming up into the, uh, the trunk to bring some continuity between water and trunk, or object and reflection. Okay. You can come up here into the sky a little bit if you want to. This is like I said it's a it's a really light color so you know, it's not making any kind of a big gigantic commitment to that hue or color. All right, let's hit some of this blue up here a little bit more. I don't know if you noticed, but I'm getting a little bit more free with my coloring and pens. It's because it's becoming coated here, so um, it's just easier to blend in. For me, when I build it up in that fashion, there's all kinds of different ways you do these things. This one just, it works for me because it just becomes you're just kind of taking things 
incrementally, you know, at, at any given time. You're just going a little bit darker than the previous color. Then by the time you get all these colors built up like this, um, they build up to the point where um, they're sitting on the surface, okay? So it's like alcohol after alcohol after alcohol. And then it's not soaking into the paper so much you can go onto those top um, surfaces and just kind of go into it. And you are kind of physically mixing the inks or you can remove inks now because they're built up. You're not going to remove the kind of the bottom layer of it, you know, all the way to white or something like that, but you can remove quite a bit um, and manipulate it um, like alcohol inks, you know, do so well. Yeah, I don't like that. See, I don't like that blue right there, so. But I have so many different color choices here. These cheap pens. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know about that one. Either yeah, that, that's a little bit extreme. Let's go with, let's try this one right here, okay. Okay, how's that? <laughs> it's kind of taking it gingerly, you know, and uh, kind of being careful. But then see here, and then I'll just kind of blend that in like so. See, but there's still kind of that light area down here, right? Even with all the colors that I've added in. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do now. I think that's about it um, in terms of my coloring. I'm going to try something that... We'll see how it works. Um, let's add it. I was thinking about going with some dye-based inks over the top of this alcohol, but I, I don't think that's going to be necessarily a a great idea. Um, so let's go with some pigment ink on here. Uh, how about some black pigment ink? Now don't go crazy with this because you don't want to go with a har super harsh, you know, super black um, application of pigment ink. Okay, I want to go for a lighter one. So just grab, um, you can grab anything. Here, a lot of you have um, the Versafine Claire. I, I need to be careful with this because this pads are like brand new, okay? And the last thing you want to do is go and smudging all these colors around, okay? Okay, so pigment inks sit on the surface of the page. They're oil-based, okay? So um, they should lay on top of the alcohol inks just fine. They would lay on top of water-based inks just fine, too, but I think they'll lay down on top of my um, alcohol pen coloring here just fine too. Okay, so blot off your 100% cotton cotton ball, okay, to where you're barely applying in it. You want it to look like you're applying um, like dry media, like powder on here, okay? That's the look of it. Don't think about it like I want to go for like straight black, you know, ink, okay? So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to Add some shadows in here, okay? It's just barely showing, okay? Let me show you what I'm doing right here. It's that right there that you want. See how it barely shows? And watch this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. That's 30 taps right there. And it's still like a, I don't know, what is that like? 50% gray or something like that. 30 taps, okay? Don't try to do, do it too. Now see, a lot of times what people do will go like this. I can't see anything, so they'll go like this into their pad, and then they do this, you know, because they can't see it. That's what you want, though. You want, you want to develop your shadows really carefully. So we did that with the pens, right? And it makes it easy and less precarious, okay? So now see this right down here? I'm adding in the shadow around in here. What I'm going to go for is I'm going to 
kind of add a little bit of a vignette in here. But see this, this shadow down here? I'm adding a shadow in the shadow area of the stamp. But also I'll do kind of the corner right here. I like doing four corners. It creates um, a vignette around the composition and um, it, it contains your composition. It, it frames it. Um, and this is a really easy way to do it. Um, I, I do it on most of my scenes. And yeah, this is easier. It's giving me a smoother um, application of media than doing it with a marker. You know, the markers are going to give you a marker look, okay? Which I like, or I want that marker look. But for this kind of overall kind of shading right here, this soft shading, you know, the softest thing is like a cotton ball, right? So why not uh, use... Um, you know, a super soft applicator for a super soft application of media. Doesn't that make sense? Now, I, I mentioned 100% uh, oop, that, look at that, that's like way too much. <laughs> so, see, for me, too, I, you know, I need to get used to it. I need to get used to my pad, how much ink is coming off of it when I ink up like that how much pressure I put down on there. But see, yeah, you know, I, put, I got too much, and then I just kind of blend it out like this, okay? So stay with it with a drier one and just blend it in like that. But look at how much this shadow is really kind of anchoring down that paper. And look at this. This, is, this looks so much kind of lighter by contrast now. I'll hit this area up in here, and we'll add some kind of an anchoring shadow. You can see the um, the colors underneath still showing there. I put my finger right there and that removes some of that oil-based ink. The oil-based ink on here will dry just fine. You know, it's on a matte paper here, some cardstock, so but it doesn't dry so fast that it's hard to blend in. Okay. dark corners on the bottom left and right. How about on the top left and right as well? Maybe I'll add a little bit less of a vignette up top because it is lighter up there anyways than in the shadows underneath the cypress. Yeah, a little bit right there. And we'll come like this. It's kind of kind of adding to that that lighting in the piece, don't you think? The more we kind of do this and kind of develop it. Going up into the cypress here and kind of coming down into it too. Let's go a little bit darker on the left and right corners here. I'm kind of debating on whether or not to stamp this bird in here. I think this bird will go in here for me. I'm just not quite sure what uh, ink to do it in. I'm guessing the Versify. Yeah, let's, let's go ahead and do that right now. This, my final impressions will be fairly um, moist, so um, I usually don't like to do that until the end. Oh, boy. 
here's let's go with um, some white pigment ink now okay let's get let's get all the effects going in here first before I stamp that bird I think okay so this is a just another cotton ball and let's go in with the white pigment ink all right now where are we going to apply that okay the lighting is coming from over here right because we've wiped off some of that doesn't it already look like it's you know, got some fog or something like that being reflected in that area. So I think in just in general, right along here in this light area, it's where light meets dark, okay? Those are the areas that I usually start off doing my fogging effect, okay? So it's already light in here. It's already kind of established like that. Again, blot it off a lot. So you're not, you're not taking a big blob of ink, okay? And then just start dabbing it down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then you have this ever so slightly changing um, look in that area there. Okay, you see that right there? It happens really slowly. It's almost like barely discernible until you get a decent amount applied there when you're doing it with a very light and dry touch. Okay, now my pad's pretty pretty dry right now so it's happening very slowly very slowly means more control hurried is something you can do but there's just a little bit less control over it that way because so much media is being applied at any given time that's no different than doing the dark ink in an area you know just if it happens faster you can do that but it's just a little bit more precarious I don't find it to be a a process that takes a long time even when doing it with kind of a more controlled application so um, you know that area's done right over there and it took you know like 30 tabs takes it takes like a few seconds okay now I don't put it everywhere but um, I like to oscillate things a little bit a little bit of fog no fog fog no fog that's just like going with dark light, dark light, dark light. You oscillate that, so I also oscillate textures as well. Soft and sharp, soft and sharp, and that also plays into the light and dark because you're applying light into dark, okay? So watch this right here, this uh, cypress, as it changes the spirit of that cypress right there. Just a little bit of tapping like that, doesn't it change that look of it? in the spirit of the uh, piece. Doesn't it look like more atmospheric now by putting some of that fog, that mist, over just a little bit of that tree right there? Doesn't it change the entire um, feel of it? See, it's on one side and not on the other. I mean, you could, you, you know, it doesn't mean you can't put some on the other side too like that, you know what I mean? But it's just, I think it looks better if you Kind of play around with your um, applications of light and dark, soft and sharp, um, you know, intense and dull. There's just more variety that way. Plus, from a technique standpoint, it means you you just do less. You know, you don't apply the same amount everywhere. Don't go full saturation with everything in every area. It means you just do like half. If we'd colored this whole thing in here, that would mean more coloring, right? If you do less coloring, that means light in here and variation, okay? So it's really, in terms of um, kind of a technique, it's doing less, not doing more. It's kind of restrained for the benefit of variation. Okay, now see these trees in the background, um, how they're in the light? Let's put a little bit more kind of light into them with this. doesn't have to be precise, <laughs> as you can see. It 
if any of your kind of coloring and like the water gets a little bit too harsh, don't worry about it. Just wait till the end and add some of this pigment ink over the top of it and it'll just obscure it. Like there's some areas in here that, you know, kind of get a little muddled, you know, where I've put, you know, too much ink or it kind of, I went outside the line, you know, by the time you add this in here, it, it just pushes everything to the background. It softens some things, things up. It just kind of eradicates all of my kind of weaker points. I don't think there was like w too many weak points in this one, but I, I just think some of it didn't look quite as finished as it does when you do this over the top of it. So it doesn't have to be done, but it sure is fun though. And look at that lighting that, that's in there now. Okay, now let's see. Let's see if I can add some extra depth in here. We'll take advantage of um, you know, more of the, uh, the imagery and depth, and we'll take advantage of um, things like the uh, Claire here in terms of uh, creating a lot of uh, visual depth through the use of value, okay? This is a very, very dark ink right here, okay? Plus, it is a really new pad, too. Okay. I'm just getting some test prints here because I haven't, you know, this is the first time I've used this stamp. You know, from this set, I've used the stamp before um, the image, but just not that stamp out of the set. Okay. Look at that. My subject matter there. It changes the spirit of that whole area down there, doesn't it? Okay, now, um, see, the pigment ink can stamp over the top of the alcohol ink, no problem, as you can see, right? But the dye-based ink, remember, dyes over, like, alcohol. It'd be like trying to stamp water over oil, okay? You can go oil over water, but you can't go with water over oil. Okay, you know, with the, it, it just won't transfer and adhere to it very well. Okay, so pigment inks are some of the, like, the darkest inks you can possibly use. All right, so this is um, called Spanish Moss. It'll give us a little bit more of a canopy here. Nice light, even pressure. Okay, let's go like this. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I'm glad I kind of waited till the end to do that. You know, like I said, I could, it could have been done in the beginning, but the thing is, when I apply, you know, I was applying all that white pigment ink in the background, if this was applied first, the Spanish moss, then I'd have that white in front of these foreground branches, but now they're really in the foreground like that. I'll go for another one over here. So I went with two impressions of it over here. I'll go with one of it over here. Maybe I'll change the height of it a little bit, you know, just for a little bit of variation or the angle. Let's come with another with another one down here. Maybe it kind of frames things off a little bit more. I tend to see this area in here like really full of life. And, uh, you know, fairly dense in the swamp, you know, it's like a living, breathing thing, you know, kind of putting a lot of oxygen all right, into the environment. So, kind of that density kind of comes into play here. But that density, hopefully, we've created some space so it doesn't just look cluttered. You know, we have some space in between, say, these pigment ink impressions and the dye-based ones in the background like that. But, Look at the depth right there with that uh, Claire. <laughs> and then these ones up here. These ones don't stand out quite as much because it's darker up there and this one's standing out by contrast. But, you know, those being like that, hopefully it looks fairly um, deep in terms of uh, spatial depth right there, you know, from these two branches and the tree in the background and, and definitely those trees in the far background. 
All right, so anyways, doing this really makes me feel like I, I need to do more coloring, I guess, you know, with pens and alcohol pens. I think that turned out really nice, and it was really fun to do. I don't know, it takes me back to days of coloring, um, but I still try to model with my pens, you know, being that we have so many inks, I build them up and I really blend them in. But, you know, when you look at really closely, it's not a great, you know, super smooth transitioning blend of it. Look at my green right there. But who cares? I mean, this is like at arm's distance right here. And that's, you know, generally what people are looking at pieces um, with. You know, they're not looking super up close. I didn't even put any kind of um, little highlights on here if it really needs it. I, I don't even think it really needs it with this type of look right here. Um, let's see about doing that, though. Not just doing it for the sake of it, but I just want to see if I can get a little sparkle into the water down here. I'll add it into this area down in here. It's just a little bit of white. It'll be very subtle because I won't, well, I could use it in other areas, but. Yeah, it looks pretty good. I'm adding a little bit of a highlight. You know, I had um, darkness on one side of the trees, mostly on the right side. I'm just putting a little touch of white on the left side of it. So you add the shadow on the right side and add a little bit of a, a touch of highlight on the left side to reiterate the, the idea of light direction here. And I've already illuminated a lot of these images in the design itself. So there's, you know, kind of a lighter area and a darker area. So I'm just illuminating. I'm just lighting the light area again. So you can just take a look at the images, too, and see where there is a light area on there and just add it accordingly. Okay? It doesn't have to be kind of theoretical. It's... It's visual. You just look to see the lighter areas of the designs and just reiterate that. Okay. Okay, so. All right, I think that is about it. One of the things, when you get your alcohol, I mean, uh, pigment ink impressions made, I don't know if I would go in and color them with alcohol inks, because that, that oil-based um, type of ink can really spread out, because alcohol will dissolve um, solvents, right? So, um, I don't know, you can test it out, you can heat set or something like that, but I would I don't know, I would leave these things just for just straight impressions, I don't think I would color them, but you can play around and test it out and let me know how it goes. Alright, so anyways, uh, let's see if you can see some of those little highlights on there, they're very subtle in here, you can see them a little bit, it's a little bit of a extra lighting in there, see, you know, like those little dots like that? It just kind of makes it stand out from the background a touch, don't you think? You know, like in here. I didn't add it on any of these branches up here, but I put a little bit in the background as well. Okay, so anyways, thanks again for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. I certainly had fun coloring with my pens and whatnot. And, uh, I don't know, just kind of thinking about um, different blends and whatnot. I don't do that often enough where I, I kind of remember what I did sometimes, so... I know it's just kind of fun to go in and, uh, I don't know, exercise these uh, different techniques and whatnot and theories. But um, for the most part, no matter what media you're working with, for me, um, what makes it a little bit easier to do is I'm doing the same type of concept no matter what media I'm doing. Okay, so there's I have a foundation of 
kind of building up usually from lighter tones into the darker tones okay and it just kind of happens you know kind of incrementally i don't jump from one to 20 or something like that i go through one two three four five six you know in terms of the steps in terms of getting a little bit darker with each color and then i continue to kind of blend them in and whatnot and then um like i said when you get to that <laughs> white pigment ink kind of fogging effect in there it just kind of remedies everything and it kind of brings everything around so i don't know fun stuff okay so anyways uh, boy that was a really fun piece to do really enjoyed it playing around with different techniques all the time and i think i need to do more alcohol ink coloring on you know this type of paper look at the, the images are shinier than the paper it's because the images are colored with alcohol inks and the alcohol inks are you know they're shiny so fun stuff all right thanks for watching tuning into the stampscapes channel if you like this channel please hit the like button and we'll see you on the next video